You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. All right, folks. Uh, Senator Kamala Harris is on the campaign trail. Of course, she is the Democratic VP nominee with Joe Biden well, earlier today. Uh, she uh, took some time out. Uh, she was campaigning in Philadelphia to uh, give me a call, and here's our conversation. We have been, uh, look, you're making the closing argument. You're there in Pennsylvania, uh, but it was surprising to lots of people, your stops in Texas and Georgia. Uh, speak to that and, and, and the reaction to the early voting and what the numbers are showing, uh, how people are responding to the Biden-Harris message. You know, here's the thing. Um, there is so much at stake in this election, and it is very important to me. It's very important to Joe that we get out there and we listen to the people, we hear the people, we see the people, and we and we meet the people where they are. Um, you know, you go to Texas, you go to to Georgia, folks are suffering, and and it's about the public health crisis, and so they want to know that their president is somebody who cares about health care and is going to keep intact the Affordable Care Act, which, of course, Joe and I will, and, and Donald Trump will not. They want to know that we're going to support small businesses and minority-owned businesses, most of which have been awfully um, damaged and hurt by this by this virus. And, and you know, folks know we have witnessed the, the, the greatest failure of any presidential administration in the history of our country. So going to Georgia and going to Texas, you know, hanging out. I was with Stacey Abrams yesterday. In Texas, Tina Knowles and, and a great leader, Rodney Ellis in Houston. Um, we're just we're reminding people that everything is at stake. And we're reminding people of the power of their vote. Because, you know, the voter suppression tactics in all of these states, in Georgia and Texas and, uh, you know, North Carolina has a history of it. Um, we're traveling all those places and reminding people that let's not let anybody take our power from us. Let's not let them try to sideline us or silence us. Let's vote, because that's our power, and they know our power. That's why they're trying to make it difficult, so we will not be deterred. I, I've been in South Carolina, Detroit, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, Jackson, Mississippi, last night with Mike Espy, and coronavirus is still a major issue. You got Trump out there talking about firing Dr. Fauci. I mean, my goodness, we are literally in the middle of a major pandemic, uh, and they're still behaving as if this is no big deal, that somehow this is a joke. Roland, and not only that, we are now looking at spikes across the country. And it's just, I, it, listen, that, thanks to Bob Woodward, we know since January, Donald Trump and Mike Pence were informed about the seriousness of this, and yet they covered up the information. They did not share it with the American people. And then he called it a hoax. He still has no plan for dealing with it. And, you know, at some point, people have to just say, look, we need leadership who understands this coronavirus doesn't care about who you voted for, but it will be handled by a real leader or it will not be handled if this guy stays in office. And so, look, this, that's what's at stake as much as everything else. One of the things that we've seen, I've been out there, and black voters are going hard. You, I mean, you got black men, you got black women, uh, but, 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 but specifically – to, there are some people out there, young voters, who are black men and black women. They're like, look, do I need to go to vote? Michigan has a same-day voter registration. If you're speaking to that young voter, that young brother, that young sister, what is Senator Kamala Harris telling them why they need to cast their ballot for Biden-Harris tomorrow? Because your voice is so important. And we cannot let the decision about who will be the next president of the United States being made without you weighing in. You have power. You have the ability to determine who will be the next president of the United States. And 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 so you must know that power and use that power. And you know, the bottom line is that everything is at stake. You look at, for example, Joe and I are committed to making sure that anybody who comes from a family that makes less than one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars goes to a a four-year public college, including HBCU public or private, for free. We're committed to saying that there will be a $15,000 tax credit for first-time home buyers, knowing that's the way we create wealth and intergenerational wealth within our families. We're saying that we need to decriminalize marijuana and, and, and expunge the records of people who've been convicted of marijuana. 
we are committed to banning soap bowls and carotid bowls. George Floyd would be alive today if that was the case. We are committed to $150 billion going to small businesses and startup businesses with a focus on minority-owned businesses and ventures, knowing that access to capital is one of the greatest ways you can create economic wealth. But we have been outside of that, that stream and outside of that opportunity for far too long, and it needs to be addressed. I'm glad you mentioned those. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, no, all of this is at stake. All of it is at stake. Um, I'm glad you mentioned those things uh, listed in the Lift Every Voice plan. I've been calling the Trump Platinum plan the aluminum foil plan because it's a joke. Uh, the, the, the- <laughs> The, the ha, Juneteenth, that could have been a federal holiday if, if, if Senator Ron Johnson did not stand up. Uh, the anti-lynching bill could have been a law if Senator Rand Paul didn't. Trump said nothing, and so to me, that plan is worthless. I went through the entire plan. It He, he has done nothing, and uh, and it's a one-sheeter compared to 22 pages to lift every voice. No, I mean, listen, and you, 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 can, you can see that there is a no, no real commitment, but let's also just remember that this is a president who has spent full time trying to sow hate and division. This is a president who on that debate stage refused to condemn white supremacists. This is a president who on Charlottesville said there were fine people on both sides when on one side you had peaceful protesters protesting racial injustice, and on the other side you had neo-Nazis carrying swastikas, carrying tiki torches, right? Uh, you, this is, you have the, the president of the United States who came in office trying to question the legitimacy of America's first black president, Barack Obama. So, you know, we have to remember who he is and, and, and really talk about what we want from our leaders and do we want a leader who sees us, who understands that we need to address racial disparities, we need to address systemic race, and do it in a way that is meaningful, knowing that people are smarter than just somebody who gives lip service to it, and it's about whether there is real plan with details. To your point, Roland, we have a plan, and we're committed to that plan. I mean, and then, you know, the bottom line is this. Um, you know, Joe Biden knows American history and, and, and the state of America well enough that he has the courage to speak the term Black Lives Matter. Donald Trump will never do that. We'll never do that. Last question. I know you have to go. Uh, if elected, you would be the first black uh, vice president. Uh, you've been. Mm-hmm. I, I remember a photo that I shot in Atlanta. Uh, there was a young black girl, uh, and 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 she was just. Uh, she probably was like four or five or six, and 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 she was so excited to meet you. Uh, how has it been for you to be on the campaign trail? And you, granted, you haven't had because of coronavirus a lot of contact with folks, but to come up against young people, young brothers and sisters who see them, who see themselves in you. What has that been like for you to interact with them? You know, I mean, it really, I will tell you, Roland, it, um, my mother had many things, and one of them was, you may be the first to do many things, but Kamala, make sure you're not the last. When I look at these young girls and boys, and I look at what I think they see, which is the possibilities for themselves, it gives me, um, it gives me the power to really keep going, knowing this is worth it. Um, when I see um, the, 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 the parents who are bringing their children to remind them of who they, the children, are, right? Um, and I know that, I, and I carry this with a very heavy sense of responsibility. Um, and, and the responsibility being that when I walk through that door, that I leave it open and wider than it was before, and each one pulled one to help people come through that door. Um, I feel a very, very heavy sense of responsibility um, to see this through and do it the right way. And knowing that the way that, that we get this done will will chart a path for so many, so many more. Well, there's a great scene in the movie, Remember the Titans, where the coach tells uh, Denzel's character, Herman, leave no doubt. And I have been saying that to our people. Uh, look. Forget close races, leave no doubt. Uh, and if it caused Donald Trump to whine and cry, so be it. But every vote will indeed count. Uh, Senator Kamala Harris, we certainly appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you, Roland Martin. You take care. All right, have, have a good one. Bye-bye. All right, folks, back to our Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment.
All right, the folks at Seek.com, black-owned company founded by Mary Spio. Uh, they, of course, a virtual reality company. You can check out their content at Seek.com, C-E-E-K.com. You can do so, of course, with these VR headsets. You can look at it, of course, on your regular device or your pad or your computer. But if you want to experience being in the room, you can use this headset right here. All you simply do is just pop in your cell phone in here, pop it on, and then uh, put this headset on, and you can literally experience their content in virtual reality. And so uh, allows for you to do a 360 degree view uh, of the room. But also, folks, uh, you, they have the 360 degree 4D headphones right here. Uh, these are, are Bluetooth headphones. Uh, they have complete surround sound in terms of as you hear the particular music. Uh, gamers love them as well when they're playing their games. Uh, and so it's just phenomenal, phenomenal bass in these headphones as well. You can get one or both devices at seek.com using this promo code RM. VIP 2020 RM VIP 2020. So we certainly thank the folks at seek.com for being a partner with us here at Roland Martin Unfiltered. All right.